Before we go any further with building more game mechanics, we want to get in the habit of documenting our work. Specifically, we're going to add comments around our nodes that communicate what our intentions were, what the node is supposed to do, what our thinking was. This may seem silly when we only have four nodes here and we just built them two minutes ago. However, down the road when you have hundreds and thousands of nodes and it's a year later and you're trying to fix a bug in your game or modify something or extend your logic, these comments, this self-documentation will save you tons of money and time. So adding comments is really simple. Right click where you want the comment to begin, say add comment, and the simplest thing we can do is just add a simple comment box. So this says listen for the jump action. And that's what that node does. I'm going to come over here, right click and add another comment and say push Flappy Boyd up. And I could be more specific and say on the jump key. But if we sort of follow this logic left to right, hopefully that's fairly obvious. So now that we have our jump mechanic created, I want to do one last thing with this, which is put a box around this whole mechanic because it's kind of all of a piece. So in this case, I'm going to select all of these nodes by clicking and dragging on the graph. So they're all selected, right clicking on a blank part of the graph and under add comment, say add comment box. And it creates a pretty close to ideal size box that surrounds all of the selected nodes. And I'm going to label this make flappy jump or something like that, whatever you think makes sense. I'm going to zoom in on this and give it a little more space around the box. You can change the color of comment boxes. If you select them, you notice they have a color property here. If you're mathematically minded, of course, you can modify the three values, red, green, and blue. If you're visual, you can double click this swatch and pick any color you like. By default, it's white. The next thing we want to do is disable our first person shooter player in several respects. I don't want him to be able to move around. I don't want him to have any weapons that he could shoot if somebody accidentally plays with the left mouse button. And I don't want him to be able to respond to the jump key. The first thing we need to do is going back to when we first started to explore the level, we have to control where the player spawns. And in this case, all we care about is that he's somewhere out of sight. It kind of makes sense to put him where this other unseen entity is, my AI tag point. These are two things that we're never going to see, and I just need to sort of set them aside. So we want to go again to Legacy Entities, Other, and we're looking for something called Spawn Point. If you knew the word spawn, you could try and search for that much, just as, just as we did with materials or objects, and you would quickly find this particular thing. So I'm going to drag it or double click and click it to put it on the terrain. Doesn't really matter which way it faces. I'm going to go ahead and rotate him around to, to face me just for fun, just for practice. And I'm going to name him Spawn Point Player because that's exactly what it's going to do. With that entity selected, I'm going to come back to my flow graph to an empty part of it. And I'm going to add a different kind of node. Rather than adding a sort of a verb, one of these nodes over here, I'm going to add a node of this entity directly. It's called an entity node. And I do that by selecting the entity first, right clicking on the graph and say, add selected entity. And lo and behold, here is my entity and a couple of things that I can do to him. And you can probably guess that what we're interested in is spawning. We want to force the player to always enter the level down here out of sight. We don't want him to just spawn randomly where the camera happens to be. And I want this to happen on game start. So I'm going to drag from the output of my game start to my spawn input. Let's just see if that much works. Save, full screen, and before I control G, I'm going to move far away up in the air where I know that I would immediately start spawning, fall, and die. What should happen when I go control G is I immediately jump down to where that guy is on the terrain. And control G, and there I am. If you're not sure about that, you could check your camera position and confirm it. And you can also see when I escape, I am indeed exactly where his head is. The next thing that I want to do is get rid of his weapons. If he has no weapons, he can't shoot anything. So weapons are considered inventory, and there's a whole group for this in Flowgraph. And what I'm interested in is simply removing everything. So item remove all. And I want to activate this on game start, but to be safe, I want to make sure that this spawning is already finished happening. So once it's spawned, I'm going to use the output of that 
to activate this remove all. I also need to tell it whose items to remove. And again, that is gonna be my local player right here. So I'm gonna drag from this entity ID down to choose entity to assign that same player entity ID. And now I know whose items I'm removing and when I'm removing them. Let's give it a test. No guns. If I left click, nothing happens. He can still move around. He can still walk from where he spawned. So let's disable that next. So if you remember our input group, let's take another look at this because we know that the WASD keys are considered input, they're keyboard input. And what I want to come down here and apply is what's called an action filter. So I'm gonna drag this onto here. And again, I'm gonna enable this after I've spawned and I have to tell it what it is I'm listening for or what it is that I want to apply. And this is probably gonna seem a little backwards. If I double click on this filter, click on the browse button, what I'm interested in is not movement, but no movement. That's the filter that I want to enable. So I want to choose no move as my filter. I want to enable that. I've told it to do it once the player is spawning. And now if we go and test, control G, now press F1, I'm typing W, A, S, D, and my player can no longer move at all. The mouse still makes him turn to left and right, but he can't move out of his position. And I'm not really gonna worry about disabling him from looking around because we're never gonna see him. There's one other thing that you may notice, which we have to get rid of, and that's the HUD, the heads up display, the ammo, the health, and the compass guidance. And for that, we have to get sort of behind the scenes. We have to get into the code of what comprises game SDK. And this is gonna be done through what's called the council. So the council is a way to talk to the engine and to your level directly. Here's an example of a council variable. If I type the word terrain, kind of a plain English word, you'll see there's a lot of things that have to do with terrain. And if we look through this, we'd eventually see something called E underscore terrain. Of course, this is all new to us. We have no idea what this thing is. So here's a little trick. To learn what a council variable, or what we call a CVAR does, type it, and then afterwards, put a question mark, hit enter, and you'll see a description of what this particular CVAR does. Activates the drawing of the terrain ground. To repeat the last CVAR that I typed in, just hit up arrow. And instead of a question mark, I'm gonna change the one to a zero. And by magic, the terrain disappears. This is exactly how we're gonna hide the terrain on game start later on. For now, it's kind of useful to have, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back on. So that's called a council variable, or as we call it around Crytek, a CVAR. The CVAR that we're interested in in this case is called HUD underscore hide. And you'll see that that's off right now. The HUD is not hidden. So I'm gonna copy and paste this. And in order to set a console variable in FlowGraph, we need to use something in the debug group. We're gonna drag a console variable node onto here. And the CVAR that I'm interested in is HUD hide. You'll notice there's no browse button. So that does imply that you will have to learn some of these CVARs. There are some tricks to help you do that later on, including, of course, the documentation. So we'll talk more about that. So I know I want to set this, and the value I want to set it to is true. I do want to hide the HUD. And when do I want to do this? Well, again, on game start, or specifically after my player has spawned, because the HUD comes from the player. So on spawn, go ahead and set this. And again, I'm going to add comments to this. I'm going to add another one here. Stop the first person shooter player from moving. Last but not least here, disarm the first person shooter player. So those are some useful comments. Let's give this a try. F11, control G, and now I see no weapons, no hands. I still have this guy here, but he has absolutely nothing. He can't move around and my HUD has disappeared. And now that I've disabled this guy and gotten him out of my way, I'm finally ready to start really building my game in earnest. The next thing I want to do is create a camera. The default camera that we've been using is not a game camera. It just allows us to see in the editor. So there's an easy trick to creating a camera. I'm going to put one right here that looks at our player just to demonstrate one more thing about game SDK. So an easy visual way to create a camera is Go to full screen view so you see the correct aspect ratio. And once you've got the view that you like, turn on your tools, 
and in the perspective viewport camera menu, simply say create camera from this view, from the current view. And here's our new camera. And of course, I'm going to give it a name. In this case, I'm just going to call it a debug camera. It's not the camera that I'm going to use for my flappy game. It's just a camera so that I can look at this guy and demonstrate something to you. The next step is I need to activate that camera on Game Start. And as you can probably guess, this is going to be a camera node, and specifically it's going to be view. And I need to zoom out here a bit and make some room. And again on Game Start, I'm going to go ahead and enable. And now I need to tell it what to enable, and that's my camera. I have it selected. I right click on Choose Entity and assign it. And that's all I need to do. Let's go to full screen, control G to test, and something very surprising and kind of amusing is gonna happen. You're gonna see what's really going on in the game SDK code, which is create an animated player that can run around and put a camera exactly where his head is. If I go to third person view, you'll see the head restored because now the camera that we can't see is kind of where that ball is right now as it's rolling past him. Back to first person view, the head is removed so that the invisible camera can sit right there. So that's kind of what's going on behind the scenes with Game SDK. Now let's create a real camera up where we need it. In our case, we want to create a camera that follows our player as he jumps up in the air and falls down towards the terrain. So I'm going to go back to my editor, get out a full screen view, and I know that my camera should be up where the bird is, so I'm going to select the bird, click here, press G to go to it, give myself a little space. I don't know which direction my game is going to be played. I don't know which direction I want to look or if it really matters, but I do know that my flappy is going to be on the left side of the screen, or let's say I've decided that, and my obstacles are going to come from the right and move past the flappy, or the illusion is that flappy is flying to the right through the obstacles. So I'm going to create a view where I have room for my bird, and I have room for a couple of obstacles, and I'm going to create a camera from that. I'm going to call this camera Flappy Cam, or whatever you like, and I want to enable it on Game Start. So what I'm going to do to save myself some time here is I may want to come back to this camera in the future. I may want to use it to see more than just my Flappy Cam is going to show me. So I'm going to copy this node. I'm going to choose it, copy it, click somewhere else, and paste with links, which will save me the step of, again, mapping the Game Start node to the Enable node. And all I need to do now is assign my flappy cam by right clicking here like that. Now beware because I'm trying to enable two cameras simultaneously. So I can either drag this connector off to remove it or if I want to make it really easy to enable it later, here's a trick. If you look closely and by zooming in on the connecting line between two nodes, there's a circle which is a little shortcut menu right in the center of the connector. If you roll the mouse over it, you'll notice that it changes to a slightly different cursor. Right click on it and say disable, and this connecting line becomes dashed, which means it's completely disabled. This is a really easy way to keep my connections in a complex flow graph, but enable and disable them easily later. So let's give this a try, full screen, and I'm going to move way, way back. And as I do that, you'll see my camera, which is represented by a set of angled lines and a box which represents the field of view, what the camera is actually able to see. Control G and immediately I see my flappy as he falls away. And you'll notice that I'm up here at about 100 meters off the ground. Okay, so we have our camera. Let's fine tune its position. I'm just going to go back here so we can kind of see it. I've got my camera selected. Give myself a little more space. And I want to put him at exactly 100 meters. And just to make it easy on the math, I'm just going to pick some numbers here, maybe, I don't know, something like this. I really don't know how far away the camera is going to be, but for now I'm going to do this. And also I'm going to get rid of all this rotation so the flappy is looking straight ahead. To see what the camera is seeing without having to go into gameplay mode, you can actually enable it in the perspective viewport instead of the default camera. Every camera that you create, and we have two of them, is listed under the camera entity submenu. So if I go to Flappy Cam, I now see exactly what that camera sees. If I press F11, I can see it in full screen view. The interesting thing is if I try and drag with my right mouse button or WASD, I can't move because I would have to move the camera. I'm just seeing what a fixed camera is seeing. 
There's an interesting technique here, which is that if I have this camera as my active perspective viewport view, I can move the camera by dragging these numbers in real time, and I'll see my view change. I don't do it quite so fast, like this. I move my camera down so Flappy seems to go up. Most of the time, however, I'm gonna work with my default camera. Now that we have the camera enabled, the next thing we wanna do is animate it. So as the bird goes up and down, we'll make the camera go up and down as well.